we done? Mm-mm. 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 Look, <laughs> you're such an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I'm going to see how long it would take before you realize I was doing the video. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh. Ah. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> Get the goddamn. Unbox this, you uh, son of a bitch. Is this mine? I don't know. I think it's either yours or yours or both of yours. What's in the box? What do you, what do you say to Auntie Kimmy? Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> more his Saturday best <laughs> What's in the box? You suck at scissors. He's like a mathematical whiz, but he can't use scissors to save his life. I don't know which one. Oh, dear God. Oh, sweet, merciful Lord Jesus. What the elf? Oh, could I try that? Oh, oh snap. I know what's going on here today. Oh, I wish you, I didn't right. have to work. What do you say down to Kimmy? Thank you. Merry Christmas. I love you. Um, I believe the proper terminology is happy holidays. Now, who wants to be my test subject? <laughs> I think Griffin does. Yeah, he does. Do you want me to open this game, Griffin? Those not. are awesome. These no, are cool. <laughs> this is Doc Ock and Spider Man. This is Hulk and Wolverine. Ooh, sweet beans! Alright, happy Merry Christmas, Dave. Can you open it? Hmm. Oh, that was awful. Just as I was about to start there, I felt a hair in my mouth. Now, I could start recording again, but I'm not going to. Because I'm that freaking real, my friends. That real. <laughs> How you guys doing tonight? I'm Jason Oliveira, and this is The Road to 40, in case you didn't know. This is my journey from point A to point B, 39 to 40. 40 is just another number, by the way. I don't really give a crap about 40. But it gave me an excuse to do this. And I've really been pleased with doing this, enjoyed doing this, and it's given me new skills that I never had before. Uh, learning to use words properly. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, this whole setup, just learning this and cameras. And I never did video much before. That the just the tribute video I did to myself about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Anywho, um, the reason I, I, the reason why I haven't dove right into last night's stuff where I wanted to pick up. I do want to talk about the smaller divisions amongst the Great Divide. That's so sweet. That's a good book title. Copywritten. <laughs> um, however, I had a phenomenal experience tonight. You know how I'm telling you guys at the end of these videos, don't forget to make somebody smile tomorrow. It's, it's almost bringing tears to my eyes. Not that I... I I'm, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but... For the first time in a long time, I let go of about 34, 33 years of my life. Just, poof. I was standing in line at Walmart, which I, I'm not a big fan of shopping at, but I had to get a few things. And um, so Gwen and I, my daughter, we don't normally shop together anymore. We used to do it all the time. She likes shopping. I like shopping. Now she's a teenager and I'm just stupid and old. <laughs> However... I had checked out, I had put all my bags into the thing, and she said, do you mind if I, can you hang on just a second, I need to get more bags, I'm almost completely out of bags, I won't be able to bag the next order. I said, oh yeah, no problem, and just something hit me like, alright, I'm going to lose my mind right now, just for fun, <laughs> and I did. So this is what I did, she came back with the bag, no, she came back, she didn't have any bags, and I was like, oh, that sucks, huh, no bags? She was like, yeah. And then this woman came up and dropped a bunch of bags. I turned around to the line behind me, which was easily six people deep. And I was just like, yes, it is a Christmas miracle, everyone. We've got bags. And I just started jumping. And, <laughs> and I just saw the smiles on face after face after face. Of course, there was a few people in line that were looking at me like, but I was just, I, I screamed. I was like, woohoo, yeah, 
ass. And I mean, anybody within 50 feet probably heard me. And it felt so good. It felt so good to make that child just be like, and there he is. And there he was again, this this wacky little kid. And then everybody that started walking by our, <laughs> our register, I kept going, hey, we got bags here. <laughs> and like, and uh, as I'm leaving the store, I'm just like, Merry Christmas, everyone. And we walked out with my hand held high in the air. And it was just awesome. And then I rode the, the car into the parking lot and I put my foot out like a ballerina. And I just felt incredible. I'm telling you, I know a lot of you. And some of you have personally said to me, you're not that, you know, you don't feel that comfortable. I understand that entirely. I really do. But the minute you let go, it's like a whole new world. It's just like I felt 30 years younger. I felt like a little kid again. Like I felt like nothing hurt me. <laughs> like my knees didn't hurt or anything. It was crazy. But I just wanted to share that with you because... You don't have to do that extreme, you know. You can just smile at a person next to you in the car when you're waiting at a stoplight or something. And I guarantee they'll smile back or they'll flip you off or something. But chances are you'll make that connection on a very basic level, a basic human level. People want to be loved. People want to smile. People want to laugh. People want to sing and dance. But they grow up and they're just afraid to. They're, they, just let, they just suppress that bit about them. It's sad the way that culture drives, not only that, but we've talked about this before, but gender. Like, when people come into my store, I work at a locally owned uh, business uh, that deals with educational supplies, toys, books, used books, and there's a cafe in the store. Well, I never ask, uh, is it a boy or a girl, unless I'm rapping, just not because I want to make a point of it, because... I can't expect everyone to be where I am and expect everyone to be where I am and feel like it's the right way to be. That's how I feel. I feel like if I want to put a pink bow on a boy's present because he likes pink, there's nothing wrong with that. If a kid wants to wear a dress because he's comfortable or, or she's comfortable doing it, they should be able to do that. Like, I've worn some dresses in my life and they were very comfortable. Not dresses, skirts, I guess. Long skirts. They go to the ankle. Oh, they were so comfortable. They really were. They were very liberating. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off on my high horse now. I'm just saying, I felt really good. I felt the spirit of Christmas move me, and I felt my inner child just jump out where he needs to be. <laughs> I don't think there's any turning back, folks. You know, it started earlier in the night. I'm not going to lie to you. When I was going down aisles, like for example, I took a, uh, a packet for making dip. Uh, you know, the little packets that get the spices or whatever inside and there was a bunch of people around me and I looked up and I had the packet and I slammed it in my carriage as hard as I could and I was just like yeah <laughs> and like a few people giggled and I was just like here it comes it's like a freight train someone who's really good at this or used to be very good at this and probably wasn't even aware that he was probably because he did it at more adult level even though it was very childish <laughs> was my uh, former roommate, friend, guitarist, uh, Gary Rigo. He used to have no fear whatsoever. We would go through drive throughs and he would say the worst stuff to people. Or, um, in, in, in a way, I feel like I helped bring that out of him. Because Corey and I, my best friend and him, we were the unibrow. Um, and we brought out the best in each other at that point in our lives. Maybe not so much now, with Gary at least. <laughs> but, um, he did it well. And I always knew it was coming. I could always feel it coming, and I would get right into it with him. Like, I was never afraid, never concerned about embarrassing myself. I probably embarrassed myself like crazy, but did people really care, or was it just me who cared how they cared? And why do I care why they care? Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling good tonight, folks, and I don't want to dig too deep into a lot of the stuff I want to talk about last night. I will say, however, the Malaysian flight uh, MH370... Yeah, 370. Um, it has disappeared. I haven't heard anything else about it today. I just wonder sometimes how powerful the control is of those who run this country. The corporations, the government, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, maybe the modern day mafia. That sounds pretty good to me. Where'd the mafia go? You don't hear too much about the mafia any day, anymore these days. You know why? Because they're in control of everything. And they just change their name and put a prettier face on. That's my opinion. I might. That's one of my 
craziest conspiracy theories, I guess, that could be legitimate. I think that's very legitimate. I think there's no doubting it, to be completely honest. However, it's just my theory, and I'm sure it's other people's theories too, but it's something I came up with over the last few years just thinking about how and where we're going as a country. And you think about this too, the whole gender thing. Like, I mean, I guess it just... You know, I don't know when it started that the man was the man, the woman was the woman. Not that, I mean, anybody has to go have sex change unless they, you know, feel like it's better for them. But, like, how did that develop? Is that just natural? I mean, is it wrong to fight something like that? I don't think so, because if you got kids that want to wear dresses and they're boys, or if you got uh, girls that want to play football and they're girls, you know, I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to, and we shouldn't even be making a deal about it. But... Why did we naturally come to that point in our lives where men did the things that are manly and women did the things that were more feminine? I'm a very feminine person, and I'm very happy with that. I'm very comfortable with that. I'm very thrilled to be who I am. And I think you should be thrilled to be who you are, too, and not hide it or be afraid of it or, or bury it in a closet or whatever it is that makes you you. Don't suppress it. Don't ever suppress it, man. What's the point in living if you do? So, yeah, that flight thing just disappeared. And you have to wonder, you know, when it first came out, it starts leaking. You know, that's probably how it works, especially now with the Internet. It's hard to hold things back. They've lost control, and that's why I think you're going to see a little bit tighter grip coming around. Look at the Pirate Bay. Look at Easy TV. Easy TV just came back on TV, online, rather. Now, mind you, these are technically illegal sites. You're downloading movies that aren't out yet, or, or you're taking money out of somebody's pocket. I don't think that it's right. However, there has to be that balance, too. I'm not going to go spend, you know, X amount of money to take my whole family to the movies because, you know, for the same experience, I can either wait for it on Blu-ray or I can steal it. Yeah, I'm saying it. Like, that's something I can do. Now, mind you, I do believe it's wrong. I believe inherently it's wrong to do something like that. But I believe that we've been being robbed for the last 30, 40 years. You know what I mean? So it's almost a modern-day Robin Hood thing. And I appreciate the people that go out there and do the work to steal it. Because as much as I feel bad for the actors and the directors and the writers and stuff like that, first of all, I think they're extremely overpaid. And second of all, I think... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, you got my point on that. But nonetheless, you've seen those sites come down. You, they're starting to trickle back now but or come back now. But, I mean, is that a test? Are they only going to keep pushing it and push it? I mean, look at North Korea was down yesterday. I'm sure that was either anonymous or the United States or some patriotic hacker, as they say. <laughs> Whatever it is. You know, I just see things going bad, like... Russia and China, I mean, Russia and North Korea talking about hanging out sometime in May. You know, Kim Jong-un was invited there to go visit him, uh, Putin. Um, you know, you got ISIS and you've got the, the kids, um, you know, bring our girls back. You get all this just terrible stuff happening in the world. And it's like, it's like they want you to see all that. They want you to be depressed by it. They want you to, you know, lock your eyes onto this devastation and horror. When there's so much good stuff going on in the world, if we aired the amount of good stuff going on in the world instead of airing all the violence and fear and terror, I think you'd see a big change in this country really quickly. I think people would go outside more. I think they'd buy less. And that's just how I feel. I really feel like we are being marketed to and force-fed shit. And it's time to get the hell out and just break that mold. And I'd love to see a change come over the country rather than having to leave it. But I mean, hope is is a fading light. You know what I mean? I'm sure it always comes around again, but nonetheless, you know what I mean. Okay, uh, last night we watched Tusk. All right, I liked it up to the point, kind of liked it. I, I like Kevin Smith, but his last few movies, eh. Um, I liked it to the point where uh, the villain... Well, I shouldn't say much. Spoiler alert. The villain's telling stories about his past. It reminded me of the good parts in the movie version, obviously, of um, bad events, uh, incredibly bad events. You know the movie, I mean. <laughs> I'm getting old. Uh, 
a series of unfortunate events. Like I like the how the way he told the stories. It was really captivating and well done. And then it just got weirder and weirder and odd. It was almost like Kevin Smith was sitting around with somebody getting high one night. It was just like, well, let's make an awesome movie of this guy, right? He keeps kidnapping people and turning them into walruses. No, 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 wait. He was trapped on an island with a with a walrus and made friends with it, but then he ate it. And then he feels bad, so every year he kidnaps somebody and turns them into a walrus and it makes them fight to the death. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. The plot just went out the window, and I just, eh, over time. I mean, we finished it just because I felt like we needed to finish it, but, I mean, I couldn't give it more than a five. I didn't think it was that good. It was very disappointing. Very disappointed in you, Kevin Smith. Um, it was good for what it was as far as campy and weird goes, but that's just not my thing. And it's not, I don't think it's necessarily your thing, too. I think you drew a little bit more on your personal life and tried to score a clerks again, but it just failed miserably. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't get me wrong. Hey, I'm not making movies. I'm not making the money you're making. I'm not selling the amount of shit, tickets, merchandise you're selling. So I can't really say shit. However... I wouldn't see another movie like that by you again. Clerks 3? Maybe. Better get better. Better get better. <laughs> I don't know. Who am I to talk? Really? Who am I to talk? I'm no one. Uh, well, I'm somebody. Someone who's spreading the love, man. So, I'm just saying, if you want to save yourself two hours or whatever, I wouldn't go out of my way to see Tusk. I, you know, if there's nothing else to watch and it's available, go ahead. I told you about my superpower a few nights ago. Um, and today I want to tell you about the opposite end of the spectrum, my weakness. Don't spread this around too much, Rodians, friends, family. I can't pour milk out of a gallon without spilling it. It's, it's at least nine out of ten times for some reason, especially at the beginning. But as it goes along, I can't do it. I always spill it. I just, I don't like the way the container is weighted. I don't like the way it, it pours, the amount that pours, the quickness at which it comes out after that little, you know, you got this big chunk of milk down the bottom and then up top, it, you know, it's all of a sudden you're just like, Whoa! you know what I mean? Either end of the spectrum, whether it's full or empty, I can't, I can't do it. I'm not good at it. <laughs> so if uh, you ever wanted to destroy me as a human superhero, <laughs> all you have to do is make me pour milk for eternity and not get a drop on myself. I don't know. Uh, I got Christmas cards today. I will never buy cards again. This is ridiculous. It got to the point where it was just a little too late to start making cards or doing stuff like that, which I have done the last few holidays. So I have saved a lot of money. But some of the cards I was looking at today were $6.99, $7.99. And I'm not talking about, like, music and sound cards. I'm talking about just regular cards. Like, beautiful cards, well-made, nice-looking cards, says a nice sentiment. That's why I pick those cards. I would never pay that for any other reason whatsoever. I couldn't believe it. I was just shocked and awed. $32 I spent on cards. No, wait, wait, wait. I got two more tonight. So I was probably about another. It's about $44, I'd say, on cards. That's crazy. I'll never do that again. That's I'm done with that. Don't buy Christmas cards. Make them. They're so much nicer when you make them anyway. Um, okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about is what do you guys feel about the the gentleman, the individual who uh, made the shirt or started trending the, um, well, not the, 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 the first person, but the person on uh, Facebook or whoever it was, put the, put the wings on pigs, um, referring to killing cops, basically. Now, I think it's a terrible thing to say. Um, and I would never wear a shirt like that or say anything like that. But it is a it's kind of freedom of speech. But ask yourself this. Like, we have freedom of speech to a certain degree. We can't say certain things that could get us in trouble. But we can say things that are our opinions and our thoughts and our beliefs. As long as they don't cross over certain laws. Should that be the case? Think about discrimination. Think about restaurants that want to stop black people from eating there or gay people from eating there, whatever it is. I mean, technically, I guess that's a, a kind of a freedom of speech, and it's a bad... I mean, they'll get away with it because they can get away with it. I mean, should we be limiting our freedom of speech? 
I mean, when I think about a case like that, I think absolutely. Like, I don't think anything, I don't think a store owner should be, I don't know, you know? That's a tough line. That's a fine line. That's something I'm going to have to think about and get back to you on. Think about it. Like, if I'm a store owner and I don't want racist or KKK members coming in my store, that's, I mean, it's a lot nicer and it's a lot more pleasant, you know what I mean? Uh, it's probably the 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 better of well it's, I can't even say the better of two evils it's like it's good and that is evil you know what I mean like I think it's I don't know <laughs> wow you have you have really left me speechless internet friends <laughs> anywho uh, I'm gonna go it's getting a little late here we gotta finish our wrapping and I am really tired <laughs> really so tired I can't wait for this to just the next two days, I think, are going to be really relaxing. We're going to take this camera. We're going to film the fam doing stuff. We I got a bunch of firewood, well, logs to burn and stuff like that. So I think we'll spend a lot of time in there, maybe do some cooking. we just get some food to put out. You know, nothing crazy. We're not doing a turkey. We're not doing a ham. We're not doing mashed potatoes or stuffing or anything. We're just doing little finger foods, and I'm really cool with that because... That's relaxing, and Carol doesn't have to go crazy because I'm not a very good cook. And I always feel useless, and I feel like uh, I can't do anything to help. And then when I do, I feel like I'm getting in the way. <laughs> Hoping our kitty friends stay with us through the uh, holidays. They're still out on the porch tonight. Uh, they're just beautiful cats. Stella and Luna are just awesome. Loki's kind of mean. He, he did, Well, he's, not, he's nice to us, but he's mean to Stella and Luna. And I don't appreciate that because they were around first. Happy holidays, everybody. Like I said, I may not get another one up tomorrow night, and I might not get one up Christmas night, but we'll see what happens. There'll definitely be a lot of recording going on and a lot of good stuff to see after uh, the holidays. So if I don't see you again before then, happy Kwanzaa, you know, uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, um, happy Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate, celebrate it and have fun. Have a good time. Spend time with your family. Stop staring at your phones. Every time you stare at your phone, I want you to hear my voice. And I want you here to say, hear me say, put your phone away, motherfucker. <laughs> There's a life to be lived and family to spend time with because it all comes to an end too quick. Um, you know, I've lost a lot of people in my life. A lot of, well, mostly family. Some friends. It's messed up when it happens, especially friends. It's always weird when you hear this person's dead. You're like, oh, Jesus, like he was my age or just a little older. It's scary. That's why you guys got to take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take care of those around you who can't take care of themselves or do your best to. You know, don't forget to make somebody smile tomorrow. Make yourself a better person tomorrow than you were today, tomorrow. Let's make the world spin a little bit happier together. Let's sing and dance in the rain. Let's live every moment to the fullest and love each moment. Because you just never know when that last moment's going to come for you, folks. I wish I did. Maybe I don't. I don't know. We'll talk about that another night. You guys have a super holiday. Uh, thank you guys for everything. Uh, I know the year isn't over yet, but it's coming to a close. And so we'll have a lot to talk about then. You guys have a wonderful night, and I'll see you guys a little bit further on down the road to 40. <laughs>